that's solid. So minus paddle doesn't do, what is this doing? Oh, there we go. So, hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here. And in today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing the all new Audi Q4 e-tron. First and foremost though, a huge shout out and thank you to the strong Audi here in Salt Lake City, Utah for giving me some time with this Q4 e-tron. I'm gonna include a link to their inventory in the description down below. We're gonna check out what they have currently. If you have any questions whatsoever, just ask for Mike or Landon. And something else I wanna mention, this is actually their demo model. So if you want to come and drive the new Q4 e-tron, then just give them a visit and they'd be more than happy to help you out. And then as always, if you're gonna save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. So we have an 82 kilowatt hour battery packed paired to a dual electric motor system. We have 241 miles of range with total system output being 295 horsepower and then 339 pound feet of torque with a charging time of nine hours if you use a 240 volt outlet. So normally I have a transition clip where I show myself turning on the lights and then I go over the lights on the front of the car, but this car will not stay on if you are not in the driver's seat. It is absolutely hysterical. So pop in. And if you guys can see, put my foot on the brake, car's on, okay? Car is on. I can literally leave the key inside the car, never, like notice I didn't close the door and I'm not, still not gonna close the door. Just going to like leave it slightly open and the car's off now. So yeah, suffice to say, I can't like <laughs> find a feasible way to show you guys what the lights look like on the front end, but we can at least talk about the front end. So you guys can see here, we've got the, accent lines there on the hood and then we do have led lights you're just gonna have to trust me on that one parking sensors integrated into the front end and then notice that the grill has been completely closed off because well it's fully electric and then i love the audi logo how they've integrated that i think that's pretty nifty now i'm guessing that blank spot is for if the car has a front camera and then notice with the trim here at the bottom and i'm just going to say this right now this looks a whole lot better than tesla's like stylistically looks really good Coming around the side here, our turn wheel setup in the front is 235, 50, 20. And then for the rear, it is 255, 45, 20. So a little bit of a different setup front to the rear. Anyways, you guys can see you've got the metallic gray on the wheel, but then you have like that silver ring that does have some uh, sharp points popping into the center of the wheel. I think it looks pretty cool overall. And then here's a quick look at the front suspension. Notice we've got these nice body painted fender flares and then everything at the bottom is also body painted. And I love the look of the mirror. It's pretty sleek looking. There is a little bit of silver trim there at the bottom of the windows to kind of break things up a little bit, but that is, well, everything for the side. So here's a key fob for the Q4. You guys can see we've got the lock function. We've got the opening here for the hatch and then we've got the unlock function with the Audi logo. Just press this a couple times and then the hatch will pop right open and notice we've got the built-in cargo cover which is pretty cool storage space back here is actually really solid and there's actually like storage on either side which is kind of interesting and then this is our little charging cable area and also we've got the all-weather floor mats to come with this particular vehicle but yeah always got to have a charger that with you when you have an electric car anyways when you're all done you can lock it or you can just press that and then it'll just lower it right back down and there you go now finishing things up with the rest of the rear. So stylistically, you guys can see here on the side of the taillights, that's pretty cool. And I love the taillight design. Obviously it goes into like a whole like light bar situation. That's just like an EV thing. Every single EV has to have a light bar because I guess that means the future. We have our Q4 badge and then we have our Quattro badge there on the other side. And then you guys can see parking sensors there at the bottom. It also says e-tron by the way. It's like stamped in to the bottom of the bumper. But there you go. Now here's the door panel in the rear. We've got really nice padding and stitching where you're going to rest your arm. And then of course we've got a window control for the rear and pretty cool looking door handle. Anyways, here are the seats. So you guys can see you've got the stitching there down the center of either seat and let's actually pop in. Ooh, legroom. Yeah, pretty spacious back here. And you guys can see we've got a little cargo net there. We have our own little climate area, it looks like the plus and minus for the temperature and then you can see with the usbs down below the 12 volt doesn't look like you can adjust fan speed though so i'm guessing that's just temperature and cup holder armrest i mean what more could you ask for also led lights in the interior that's fancy let's head to the front 
So here is our front door panel. We've got really nice padding and stitching here at the bottom portion. All of our window controls right there and then adjustments for the mirrors, they do power fold in. And then here's another quick look at those mirrors. We do have memory seats and I like how we've got this all wrapped still, it's pretty cool. Anyways, front seats, so you can see the stitching, uh, same design in the center as what you had in the rear seats. And the padding's actually very nice with these seats. Power adjustments on the side. And then pretty normal pedal layout, nothing too crazy. And then light control right there. And then notice the darker trim on the side of the vent. Let's pop in. So here is the steering wheel for the e-tron. You guys can see, really nice soft touch all around. Darker stitching down the center. And it's actually a two-spoke design, which is pretty interesting. I love how the heated steering wheel button is actually on the steering wheel. I mean, Makes sense, but not a lot of automakers do that. We've got our voice command, volume controls. We actually have paddles here on the back, um, which are tied to the regen system. I'll show that later with the driving portion. And then we have some controls here for the center screen. And I believe I actually have to pop this into drive to be able to turn, yeah, I have to pop it into drive to turn the steering wheel for you guys. So you got like the two different stocks, sorry, the camera doesn't want to focus on them, but turn signal, and then our cruise control stock, and then our windshield wiper stock, and yeah, there's our steering wheel. So here is our center gauge cluster. And as you guys can see, it shows us the range that we have right now. So we have 181 miles of range at 79% charge. And just like other Audi models, you can change like what the screen shows from an information perspective. You got a bunch of different menus you can scroll through. And look at that, we even have like the navigation that we can put to be a full view on the screen, which is pretty cool. I love how it says we're off road right now. We're in Audi's parking lot, we're not off road. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, really good system, really easy to use. And there you go. So here's the center infotainment screen. First off, if we pop it into reverse, we do have a backup camera with trajectory lines that turn with the steering wheel. And notice we have parking sensors front and rear and resolution on the camera is actually really solid. Now, when I put it into park, it's gonna shut the car down for a second. And then I put my foot in the brake and then let it know that yes, I am still in fact wanting to use the car. <laughs> We'll talk about the system in a moment. Anyways, notice with our different drive modes, we have like an efficiency mode. And then we have our comfort, auto, dynamic, individual. You guys can read the screen. Um, but anyways, touch response time is really solid. And it's really intuitive. Like I love Audi's infotainment system. It like, it just, it makes sense. And like if I want to get vehicle information, just click the vehicle tab, like pretty straightforward. We've got analog controls here for our climate system. So we do have a dual zone climate system. Notice that you can kind of change how it is. So you can do like an eco mode, for example, with the climate system if you want to save charge. And then we do have heated seats here for the front. And then we've got our drive mode select, which is actually like a little button here. And it just clicks through the menu here. So yeah, kind of interesting. And then on that same button, we have like the stability control and then the hazard lights as well. And then this is just a little shortcut for the safety tech and then the camera system. So like if I press this, for example, it just pulls everything up. So you guys can see the whole setup right there. And now we have the most interesting part. Well, first off, our little like volume thing, it's a slider, which is kind of interesting. So like you hover your finger here and notice that you've got like the volume control there. And so basically, what you can do is just like slide for the volume, but obviously I don't have anything on, so there's nothing for it to react to, but yeah, it's yeah, just, just interesting. So that's not the only interesting thing. The whole like system here is interesting. So we have a stop start button that is pretty much useless because you just put your foot on the brake and it automatically turns it on. And then when you basically put the car in park and then get out, it automatically turns the car off. So like, there's no reason to use this. And then you guys saw when I put this into gear, like that functions perfectly fine, super easy. But when you put it in a park and then put my foot off the brake, it automatically puts the car into like the shut off mode and then put my foot on the brake and then everything's back on. So like, it's something you could easily get used to. It's just very different. There's, there's a lot of stuff in this that's just very different. So under this whole center console area, we have like storage space, which is, I shouldn't say center console, center stack, whatever you want to call it. Done to storage space, which is pretty cool. Couple cup holders. And then we've got our armrest right here, which you slide backwards and then lift up. And then I'll reveal the actual center console. And then you can slide that back if you want it as an armrest. I love how it says e-tron here. And then the material use on the dash is really nice. You can see the glove box set up right there. And then we've got our mirror here at the top. And then we have a pretty cool center situation. So got to increase the brightness for you guys. Now we've got these sliders. So for example, if I want to do the shade, just slide my finger and then it opens up the shade. And then you have the same thing on the other side for the sunroof itself. Uh, it does have a panoramic sunroof if you guys are wondering. I'm glad it's not just like a glass roof like what a lot of um, EV automakers will do that it's an actual like functional sunroof, it's cool. 
So here's our window sticker for this Q450 e-tron Quattro is the exact name. Um, tons of standard equipment. Uh, the big thing I want to go over, and I guess this window sticker has definitely seen better days. <laughs> Four-year, 50,000-mile new vehicle warranty, and then there are uh, more warranties associated with this, like an eight-year, 100,000-mile warranty on the high-voltage battery system, it looks like. Again, window sticker seen better days. But we've got a base MSRP of $53,300. This has a couple options, including the Premium Plus package and the Technology package as well. Total MSRP, $62,410. And then if you guys want to see the quick EPA section, I went over most of the information that's on that earlier in the video. Let's see how it drives. Well, let's talk about visibility before we set off here. And I guess I got to recline the seat so you guys can actually see what's happening. <laughs> visibility over the hood, both of the mirrors, and then throughout the rest of the rear. And let's set off. We are setting off and there's quite a bit of construction here in uh, downtown Salt Lake. So sorry if this driving route isn't the best possible driving route. I will be tweaking this. Um, over time and I mean you guys can see like that street doesn't exist so, yeah not exactly the uh, best uh, place to drive but anyways first off seat comfort is absolutely fantastic actually I'm really impressed uh, it's not something that like I, I guess I associate with Audi whenever I think of Audi I, I think of like cool looks sportiness uh, and RS models frankly right and R8s of course you always got to think about the art whenever you think of Audi but yeah this is really comfortable actually um the climb control system's great now the one thing that kind of confuses me about a lot of evs is that they um like this doesn't have heated seats for example and that's like a lot of evs like pretty much every single tesla um doesn't have heated or sorry doesn't have air conditioned seats rather it has heated seats but doesn't have air conditioned seats. i think that's kind of a weird thing that electric automakers do is they i, I don't know i don't know why that's the case <laughs> maybe maybe uh air conditioned seats are just too wasteful to make sense um, but with the uh, throttle, it's actually uh, not throttle. Sorry with the accelerator pedal It's actually really um, Easy uh, in terms of the use on it. So we're just in the auto mode right now I actually want to pop into the efficiency mode and see kind of how that Changes things, but if you're not familiar with driving an electric car, this does not drive weird uh, at all like it feels like a normal car so that's that's good like you uh, other than the fact that you don't hear like any engine noise feels like a normal car okay well i'm definitely picking another driving route next time because <laughs> yeah these uh these these stoplights are definitely brutal but we're gonna go from the efficiency to the dynamic mode and so this is going to be kind of like our more hardcore accelerating mode so we'll be able to see how it kind of gets up that's solid so minus paddle doesn't do what is this doing Oh, there we go. So if you press the, uh, let me double check. Yeah. So if you press the minus paddle, um, a bunch of times, then it does really aggressive regen. And if you pl press the plus paddle, then it gets rid of the regen. So I guess I got it mixed up in my head initially because I thought it was the opposite. I typically do, um, just really aggressive regen whenever I drive fully electric vehicles, because it just, it, it, obviously it's the most economical thing to do but it just feels right when you're driving electric cars like I, I don't know it once you once you drive enough electric cars it just kind of makes sense but this at least lets you like slowly get used to it because what you can do is you can have it fully off when you first get this and then as you you know kind of get used to being with an electric vehicle you can slowly increase the amount of regen that you have and I'm gonna get another acceleration here I mean it's it's quick it's not like insane with the acceleration like what you get with some evs but it's still like instant power instant torque uh, it's not necessarily gonna like i mean unless you're not paying attention it's not really gonna throw you in the back of your seat but it's still enough that it like it's great for daily driving and i i frankly think that it's it's got a decent level of excitement to it i guess this test drive route isn't so bad once we got once we got to this part it was just it was just the initial part that was a rough uh, experience, I suppose. But let's sum things up here with the Q4. So first off, um, again, just like a lot of other uh, OEMs, this looks good on the outside, uh, especially, again, always gotta talk about Tesla because everyone talks about Tesla when they talk about EVs. Like this just, it looks like a real car. <laughs> like, I don't know why automakers think they need to make these electric cars look crazy. Like this just, it looks, 
it looks like an Audi. So, yeah, I like that. Um, interiors, you know, it's got some, like, the infotainment screen's pretty normal in terms of Audi. This whole area down here is a little bit different, but I, I think it looks cool. It gives it kind of a more modern feel. From a driving perspective, it, it drives really well. Um, this is on the same platform as the Volkswagen ID4, and it's a rear-wheel drive-based platform, and you can definitely feel it. Like, this has really solid driving dynamics. Uh, again, despite the fact this doesn't have obscene power figures, it, it feels really good. So overall, as you know, a luxury electric car, I think that Audi did a fantastic job. This has solid range. It's got a really good charge time as well because they aren't using a monstrosity of a battery pack. They're using a relatively small battery pack in terms of, you know, the EV world. And so you're not going to have to charge it for days, if, especially if you don't have like upgraded outlets. Obviously, get 240s if you get an electric car. But yeah, I think they did a great job stylistically. I think it drives really well. It, it's comfortable. It's not crazy quick, but it's quick enough. And it's just another reason as to why you shouldn't purchase a Tesla. Let me know what you guys think. That's gonna sum things up for our video on this Q4 e-tron. Again, a huge shout out and thank you to the strong Audi here in Salt Lake City, Utah for giving me some time with this Q4. Link to their inventory in the description down below. If you have any questions whatsoever, just ask for Mike or Landon. I'll see you.